two health care choices for America. One choice is to sign up for concepts of a health plan prescribed by Donald Trump. Over the weekend, J.D. Vance gave America a preview of those concepts. He said that all Americans should not be in the same health insurance risk pool. My take, the Vance idea is bureaucratic lingo for an idea that should alarm millions of Americans. That's because what it means to me is if you've got a pre-existing condition or if you are at risk of developing a chronic illness, insurance companies will be allowed to isolate you from younger and healthier Americans. That means they'll only sell insurance that's prohibitively expensive or limited in benefits. In my view, the concepts proposed by J.D. Vance are a prescription for going back to the days when you can clobber people with a pre-existing condition. The other choice in America is to sign up for concrete health results, which is what Democrats have produced. That's what's in the Inflation Reduction Act, which was passed into black letter law two years ago. I'll start today by taking a few minutes to talk about the lower costs Americans are already getting because of what's in that law. Right now, price gouging penalties on big pharma are limiting the endless price increases on prescription drugs that have put the squeeze on Americans. Here's how it works. Senators taking an expensive cancer drug through Medicare Part B used to see their costs increase every year much faster than their Social Security benefits. With, with the price gouging penalty now in place, many cancer drugs only had price increases of 2%, lower than the rate of inflation and the Social Security cost of living adjustment. This slowdown as a result of the price gouging penalty has saved seniors and taxpayers $3 billion in the first year and a half alone. Second, seniors are saving thousands per year through an out-of-pocket cap on prescriptions uh, picked up at the pharmacy counter through Medicare Part D. As the committee is going to hear this morning, older Americans with very expensive prescriptions now pay for them in the first month or two of the year, but from the third month onward, they can pay nothing out of their own pocket. In just three months, that cap will go down to $2,000, which will mean even more savings for seniors and the ability to spread the costs over the whole year. Right now, working families who buy private health insurance are saving an average of $800 a year in lower premiums through enhanced tax credits from the Inflation Reduction Act. And finally, right now, seniors can save hundreds of dollars a year on free vaccines to complement the $35 insulin cost cap. <clears throat> Taking as a whole, and I went through those four or five areas that give people actual relief in their pocket now, the new law is making a concrete difference in the lives of millions of working families and seniors. These cost-saving measures need to be protected and strengthened in the years to come, not watered down or erased by putting big pharma or insurance companies back in charge. Looking ahead, America has started to witness the biggest change in how Medicare pays for pharmaceuticals in decades because Democrats have taken away Big Pharma's holy grail, the prohibition on Medicare negotiation. And I won't take a whole lot of time here, but I just want to give people a little bit of the origins of how this happened. Back in 2005, Senator Olympia Snow of Maine sat pretty much at the end of the dais over there, and some young guy from Oregon, skinny guy, had a full head of hair and rugged good looks, sat down there with our new and great senator from New Jersey, Senator Helmy. So Senator Snow and Senator Wyden said, we're going to make this getting rid of the prohibition on negotiation bipartisan. And we worked really hard in the committee on a bipartisan basis to do it. Who are the sponsors that we got off the committee? We got John McCain, 
another Republican. We got Russ Feingold, Diane Feinstein, but it was a bipartisan group. That's the way big legislation like this ought to be, but unfortunately, we couldn't get bipartisan support for getting rid of the prohibition on negotiation in the IRA. Just yesterday, I saw that senior Republicans want to go back to the old days and say 50 million seniors shouldn't have any bargaining power. Get rid of negotiation, toss it in the garbage can. Well, if you do that, if you get rid of the action that Democrats took in the IRA, it runs right up against the first round of negotiations, the results that we're seeing in lowering the price of some of the most expensive medications. Why would we want to go back to the days when seniors didn't have bargaining power? The results of the negotiation are already clear when these lowest pri lower prices go into effect in January 2026. Seniors are going to save $1.5 billion and taxpayers are going to save $6 billion in just one year. In the coming months, Medicare will select the next 15 highest cost drugs to negotiate, which will continue to deliver cost savings to seniors who need it the most. Now there's more to do. One of the areas that I've always believed strongly in is when there's leadership at the federal level, the way there was with insulin, you'll see people in the private sector start going to their insurers and their employers and say, I want the same deal. So we saw a bit of that after the insulin cap was put in place, but obviously there's a lot more to do. So we want to extend those cost-saving approaches in Medicare to the greatest extent possible to the private sector. I feel very strongly about middlemen, and I think when you look at the more than $4 trillion that's spent every year on healthcare in America, all these middlemen with fancy acronyms we're going to have to go after these kinds of abuses. And I'm committed to doing that because an increasingly large chunk, the $4 trillion that Americans spend on health care each year is going into the pockets of middlemen. It's not going into the pockets of people who need to pay for care. It's going into the pockets of middlemen. Finally, Congress has to protect families from a giant premium spike that's coming next year when the middle class tax credits for health care expire. So I'm all in to extend these credits so to help millions of working families make sure that they don't see a premium increase. That would be coming up pretty soon. And I'll just close by noting that all of these approaches we're talking about involve mobilizing both the private sector and a focused, targeted role for government. Why in the world would be, we be saying we're not going to do something for working families who are getting hit with another round of premium increases. This is right in front of us. We can do something about it. I thank our witnesses. We've got a good panel. Um, I go back a fair number of years with a number of our witnesses. We're glad you're here. Senator Crapo, I'm sure, is the case, same case. We divide up our witnesses and looking forward to hearing from all of you. Senator Crapo. <clears throat> thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And before I begin my remarks,